Good day guys, Henry here from UC360. Welcome to another video. In this video, I decided to put the UC to the test. But unlike any sort of extreme, hardcore, off-road test that you may be thinking of, this test is rather aimed at seeing just how good an EUC can be at fulfilling what's potentially one of its most fundamental applications, commuting. Riding an EUC on the trails, doing tricks and stuff is of course a lot of fun, but it's undeniable that whether going to and from work or just running your errands around town, commuting is the core reason why most people leave the house in the first place. But who said commuting can't be fun? That's right, nobody. So in order to put the fun in fundamental, I decided to compare what it is like commuting on an EUC as opposed to on some of the most popular means of transport such as cars, bicycles and public transport. So shall we get rolling? Let's go! Oh wait, where are you going like that? I'm going for a ride! Aren't you forgetting anything? Oh yeah, that's right! thought kidding up could be so much fun. But back to the ride, I had a few things to pick up and sort out around town, so I set off to my first stop, the Apple store in the city. I dropped my Apple pencil, it stopped working, so don't do that. First leg of the trip's done. It took me like 15 minutes to get here, but a lot of fudge time as well. And here's the time for the other transport options according to Google Maps. Commuting though is not only about how quickly you can get there, it's about how quickly you can get there for the least amount of money. So I also added an approximate cost of using each option for each leg of the trip, leaving out costs such as initial investment, registration and all this to simplify things. But it was finally time to leave the city and head to my second stop, Tuong Village. Each of these means of transport have their advantages of course. A car can take you much further, much faster and allows you to carry so much more with you too. A push bike is probably the healthier option out of the bunch as you score a cardio session each ride. And public transport is great if you just want to take yourself and nothing else other than a bag maybe. But having used each one of these options extensively over the past many years, I can confidently say that none of those options were completely ideal. The biggest issue with driving around town is finding affordable parking. Oh yeah, and traffic. That also goes for public transport. Not the parking part, but the traffic and plus wait times involved and you know the rest. And the push bikes are cool, but no one likes to get to their destinations all muggy and sweaty. As for other portable electric vehicles, for the most part, they aren't as portable or easy to roll as an AUC, making it tricky to take inside places. So I just got to the shops and um, I'm just gonna get some treats for my boy and uh, might get myself a burger too. It has taken me 12 minutes to get here from the city, which is right over there. Another great thing I love about getting around on the UC is just how seamless it is to switch from riding to rolling or even sitting down for a quick bite. Forget about going underground, round and round, looking for parking or locking up your bike or scooter. In the end, those precious minutes only really hold you up. It's a great feeling being able to get to your stop, do what you need to do and leave just as quickly. And speaking of stop, I'm all done here and I'm ready for my third stop, the barracks. Since I started commuting on the USA, I gotta say, I struggle to remember last time I jumped in the car for a quick trip somewhere. I didn't really plan it that way, it just happened that way. But it's perfectly understandable that that transition won't happen just as easy as it sounds for most people. Perhaps a combination of two, such as putting the UC in the boot and parking the outskirts, or taking the UC on the train and riding to and from stations, could work better for those who live that little bit too far for a reasonable there and back commute. All right, we're here. Finding the shops now, I mean, obviously, as you can see, I can bring the wheel inside, so you know, no locking it outside, no risk of it getting stolen or anything like that. It took me 18 minutes, it says that, but when I left, there were four minutes there, so 14 minutes from my last stop to here, 
also there was a lot of fudge time in fact not really fudge time more so like fun time i just needed a couple of items so after this quick in and out i was back on a wheel towards my fourth and last stop before home the pet shop say made me realize that for the first time I started looking forward to the journey more so than the destination itself and as a result you always end up sidetracking whenever you come across interesting places along the way but despite that sometimes chipping into your total commute time that's probably where the beauty of an EUC lies. Commuting on an EUC is much more than just a quick trip on a budget. It would be unfair not to mention a third factor that, in my opinion, is just as important as time and cost. That puts the UC on a category of its own. And that factor is the fun. I mean, I bet my commute wouldn't be as epic as this should I have been using any of the other transport options. Plus, riding hands free really opens up a world of opportunities when it comes to carrying things like bags or even doing a little dance when the tunes are just too good. I had 20 minutes there before when I left and now it's at 31 so it took me 11 minutes to get here. It's not a bad time. After picking up some dinner for my dog, it was finally time to head home. My home ride took me 8 minutes and uh, the highly anticipated results are in. And here's what they look like. Surprising or not, public transport was by far the worst option, taking far too long and costing a substantial amount. One could argue no one would really do these many trips in a row, but public transport was behind the other options for each leg of the trip anyway. The third place went to the bicycle. Despite having taken much too long to complete the trip, if anyone did that, that would be a heck of an exercise, so you gotta give it to it. As for first and second place, it kinda ended up depending on how you look at it. Unsurprisingly, the car was the quickest, but that also came with a cost for fuel, whereas the UC did take an extra 13 minutes. But the cost to charge it for that trip is negligible. And probably those 13 minutes was just me fooling around here and there, sidetracking, you know how it goes. And let's not even mention how much that fuel cost adds up over the course of one year. Oh, and traffic. So, I'm not sure about you, but I'm picking the UC as the ultimate commuter, hands down, any day of the week. However, I know that unfortunately commuting on an EUC isn't an option everywhere in the world due to regulations, lack of cycling infrastructure, yada yada yada. But if you live somewhere where commuting on an EUC is possible, I hope this video has given you some good food for thought. And if you agree that the UC simply really truly is the ultimate commuter, but you're just terrified of even looking at them, well, trust me, the learning curve is steep, there is no sugar coating it, but the rewards are 100% worth it once you get the hang of it. So to wrap up this video, I gotta admit that I didn't really know exactly what to expect from the results of this test, but I gotta say that I am pleased with how good the UC can be for commuting. In the end, it turns out that the ultimate commuter is not only the one that takes you to your destination for the least amount of money, but the one that does all that with the maximum amount of fun. And with that, we get to the end of this video. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Let me know down in the comment section. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Big cheers and right on!